Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California, and today I'm going to actually talk about my cardboard box garden. Yes, it's a cardboard box garden. That's all they are, are this. Now, I do not promote cardboard boxes. Let's get that right out. It's not something I like. My favorite are totes and buckets. You can get a raised bed. They sell for like $150. You, I've talked about that a lot, how they're six foot wide and you've got to fill the whole thing. And if you're new, it's going to cost you hundreds of dollars in soil. So I, my favorite are the totes. The totes last for years. You use, I get the 18 gallon, though you can get the ones that are about 27 or 30 gallon, but they're so easy to set up. Easy to put away if you want to, or easy to leave out all year. Here's the thing with cardboard boxes. So many of us have them and they're free. You order something, they come in a cardboard box. What are you gonna do with them? Well, you can do what Gary does, make them flat and find something to do with them. Or you can make them flat, find something to do with them and then pop them together. Now, that's it. You don't have to tape it, do anything fancy. You're ready to go. I push these in. Now you've got a vessel to grow in. You don't have to worry about making holes. There's plenty of holes. And you fill it up with soil. You've seen how I've done this. I fill the whole bottom up with wood chips or bark or branches and then leaves. You've got grass clippings, all that. And then on the top, you want to put, oh, about that much your richest soil. Here's the thing. They're free, okay? We've all got them almost everybody and if you don't have them you know where to get them and they're going to break down okay but they're good for one season only i don't even know if they'll last the whole season my thing is is i'm excited with them because i am going to grow in them as long as they'll grow okay if they grow for three to six months that's perfect and then what happens to the cardboard it returns to the earth right it's like wood chips they return to the earth. Well, this is going to return a whole lot faster. But in the meantime, you're growing in it. And then on top of that, this will turn in the soil. Now, why do I not like them? The reason I don't like them is they do harbor slugs. They do harbor snails, small snails, and then earwigs, roly polies. Everything likes to hide in all the crevices of them. And if they don't hide in crevices, oh, I'll cut it all off. They'll hide underneath. And cardboard is corrugated. They can hide in that. Okay. So if you've got a big issue with those bugs, this is their attractor because it's their home. But if you can deal with that, then you can set up a garden. Like I said, it's free. And, and don't throw away anything afterwards because all this is going to end up being your soil later, including the cardboard. Whatever you put in there is going to break down. The earthworms will come to it, the microbes will come to it, and they will break it down. Now, I would not grow with this on a deck or a patio, especially if you've got wood, because this, as it breaks down, will break down your deck, unless you can put it on something. Now, you can put this on a chair. You will have to line the entire thing with plastic. At that point, you defeated the whole purpose of not getting a tote, which you can go to Walmart, Target, any of your hardware stores, they all carry totes. If you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, they only inside the store, I've noticed, sell the more expensive ones. But if you go online, you can still get them for five, six or seven dollars for an 18 gallon tote. You can pay for it, order it. They'll ship it to your closest Home Depot or Lowe's and you can pick it up. Walmart, I just bought two more sets this morning for $6.50 a piece. Sometimes they're five. They had them for $6.50, kind of a burgundy red color. Good enough for me. And I use the whole thing, the lid and all. And you know about that. So the thing is, lining it with plastic. Let me go back to this, because this is very important. You want to make sure you get a plastic that's rated a five. You can get sheets. They come in a roll, and they are with the triangle five. Those are considered by the government food safe. Garbage bags are not. 90% of the garbage bags are not food safe. The USDA.gov will tell you, do not store food you're gonna eat in there, do not put food of any type, do not use it for consumption. 
It is basically number three plastic. It is designed to go into the garbage. You fill it and you put it in your garbage. Okay, so that is not food safe. Don't get garbage bags. But you can get plastic liners that are food safe and they will have a triangle with a five. One, two, four, and five are considered food safe and considered organic. Organic farmers can line their strawberries and everything with that plastic that's marked with one of those numbers, including storing their food, shipping their food, that's considered organic. Trash bags are not. Keep that in mind. You want to use them? That's up to you. I personally will not. I think this is going to be fantastic. You can cover it. We'll get into a minute why that one's all covered up differently. You can grow in it. You can turn your cardboard into your future soil. Our box is treated. They're treated at the warehouse with something to keep silverfish and roaches and bugs like that out. Otherwise, you'd be getting shipments with bugs in there. But it's probably a formaldehyde type product. The same thing like your new carpeting, new vinyl flooring. There's a treatment in there that has to dissipate. And once it dissipates, then you're okay. Everything is fine. So I wouldn't worry about that because by the time you get it, and by the time you set it up within that week, it's going to be gone. As far as the paint, I haven't heard anything bad on this. It's probably a soy paint, so I just wouldn't worry about it. That's little. That's just going to disappear. And keep in mind, if you do use a garbage bag, they end up crumbling. They don't just tear. They crumble into dust, and I don't want that, those dust particles in the soil in which I'm going to grow in. I don't mind something like a tote that might crack, and maybe I have to cut it down and use it smaller, or it breaks, let's say a plastic bucket breaks or something, and then you throw it out. The garbage bags... They crumble, they disintegrate and go into dust. I mean, you could breathe it in. So anyways, going back to this, I think this is fabulous. If you have, you know, your funds are low and you don't want to go out and buy totes, you can't find totes. A lot of you have told me across the US, your Walmart, your stores don't have any more totes. Thrift stores, don't forget to try thrift stores. If you can't get totes, go ahead and grow in a cardboard box. Now keep in mind, Anything that can grow for years will not be able to survive a cardboard box because this is going to disappear. That's okay. Next spring, you shuffle all that up and you either put it in a tote, if you can get a tote or a raised bed or a bucket, or you can put it back in a cardboard box. I planted the tomato about six days ago. It is doing fantastic. I followed it up with everything else and everything is doing really, really well. So I'm very happy with it. I now have walking onions that are walking. I've got flowers in here. I've got strawberries. I've got an eggplant. I've got cucumber. I've got another tomato that's already throwing the baby tomatoes. I've got tomatoes on it. I have watermelon on the end. And then back here, I've got zucchini growing and other squash. So you can grow a lot in there, but just be aware if you've got a major slug problem or a major snail problem or a major earwig or roly-poly. Now roly-polies don't usually do too much damage because they eat a lot of the brown leaves, but if they can't find enough, then they will eat your plant. You can catch those though. There's ways of making little traps to catch those. So understand and analyze what you've got and you know issues and then see if it will work. I don't worry about ants. Ants usually get in there and they break a lot of stuff down. So ants aren't an issue. The only time here in Southern California ants are an issue are is if they get in there and they make a home, then they tunnel. Now what they're doing is they're making a highway, let's say in your container, be it no matter what container, and they got highways, and they drain the water away from their nest, which means your plant that's in there is not getting water because they designed this beautiful river that takes the water and takes it out. That's when you want them out. I've got ways of getting rid of them too. I haven't had any issues with ants in here. So think about it, and maybe you want to mix and match. Maybe get some totes and plant some boxes. That's what I'm going to do. And again, if you want to get it off the ground, make sure you get a good plastic liner. You can line the box, but no matter what, the box is going to break down. I don't care what you do to this box. I've done it. It will break down. So I hope I've given you an idea. You can watch my garden grow. I'm actually quite happy with it. Going to put another box back here, probably this one, and we'll all see how it goes. It's only been set up for a few weeks now. I don't even think it's been that long, and we'll see how it goes. This moringa tree is going to be really happy. 
because everything that I put in there is making its own plant food. All those leaves and there's kitchen scraps in there and, and bark off of trees and limbs. That's all breaking down. It works exactly the same as if you're growing in a tote or a bucket or a raised bed or even in the ground if you're loading all that in there. I'm composting in place as everything grows. It's easy. It works for me. I know it can work for you. So with that, ask your questions. Let me know what you think of cardboard boxes if you've done it. Tell everybody tips and tricks and everything you've got out there. And let's see the main thing, if we can get everybody to grow something, because that's really important. With that, have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Oh, I forgot about the watermelon. I'll walk over there and I'll show you exactly why the watermelon's got all those tote lids and everything around it. Now the only reason I have tote lids around here, and even a piece of glass, is I've got some watermelons planted in there. They're doing fantastic and right now I want to make sure that they're sheltered from the wind. We have been getting back into the 40s at night. Watermelon plants do not like cold temperatures. So by sheltering them from the cold wind, I'm hoping that they'll get well established, get better size, and then I can string them up. That's why they're covered, and that's the only reason they're covered. The other plants, they can droop. See, they can droop with the sun. That's what they do, and then when the sun goes down, they pop back up. But watermelon, when it gets really cold though, they don't mind the heat. Look how beautiful they are with the heat. The problem is they don't like the cold. So I'm trying to deal with them with the cold. I think we'll be okay, and if not, I'll just get some more watermelon in there next month. So it's a little early for watermelon here in Southern California, but I'm trying to trick Mother Nature. With that, have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.